London. Hey everyone, Matt from SoundRolling.com and today I'm going to be finally reviewing the VT500 Lavalier. Now I have been using this for about six months on various different shoots. Not had time to properly give it a demonstration, but I finished early on the uh, feature doc that I'm shooting at the moment, and so I thought I'd finally be able to take the time to um, uh, not only give you just more context of actually using it in the field, but also just a quick rundown of all the usual stuff. Uh, I had a quick look at all the other uh, review videos out there because this mic has been around for a while, um, so I'll link them below because quite a lot do um, different kind of tests and comparisons. Uh, and though they only go so far when you're listening on a phone, uh, it's useful the more context you have and the more perspectives, then hopefully the better your sound will be. So let's get in with uh, what came with the pack. So first we've got the actual microphone. You might notice a few little uh, scratches and things of use. Uh, but yeah, this is a kind of front-facing capsule, which is quite interesting. Um, it is omnidirectional, so that means it does actually record from everywhere. Um, but it's just interesting to know. It reminds me more of like the Tram uh, 50, which is nice. Um, and it's injection molded, and uh, there's even RF shielding on there as well. So there's a bit of uh, bonus from any sort of interference directly on the mic head, which is nice. Uh, so let's have a look at the accessories. In the kind of blue box that you have, you have all these accessories that it comes with. It comes with the cable wrap, then there's the windshield, there's the kind of, what is it, shirt clip, tie clip? Uh, more a shirt clip. Uh, and this mount actually spins around on it. Uh, it feels very firm as well, which is nice. Um, so unlike with things like the COS 11, you have to loop through and loop another way. Um, this one's a bit more versatile and turning around. Um, and then the classic vampire, or if you're in the US, Dracula mount, and this is to stick to carpet and things like that by just hooking in uh, with the little teeth. Um, won't destroy the carpet. Uh, and then um, kind of a pinhole uh, mount as well. Uh, never really used one of these, but maybe it's more for like theater or neatening up. So I'll try and find another video that I can put in the description for you guys to uh, look at and the most common mounts that I use because I'm mainly hiding uh, lavaliers. Uh, I've already pre-stuck some uh, Bubble Bee Industries sticker on it, um, but this is the uh, the kind of rubber mount. And this is very standard uh, for professional grade, as uh, the other review people said. Uh, professional grade microphones um, just basically come with better mounting, so that'll just kind of slide in there. It's obviously made perfectly for it um, so it fits in great you'll see there's a little pin at the top as well as the uh, front facing um, which is really nice so let's see how it sounds right now you're listening to uh, the VT500 I've also mic'd myself with the Sank and Cos 11 so we can do a bit of back and forth in the video hopefully my sync clapped work hopefully my sync clap worked that's quite hard to say um, I'm going into uh, electrosonics um, and you'll notice the uh, volume that I've got in there, they kind of recommend that you're hitting the greens and possibly the reds. So I've kind of just attuned the audio settings on that to get 30. And this is for the VT500. Um, and with the exact same uh, receiver, to get kind of the same effect, uh, it's actually only 22 that you need for the Sanken. So read into that kind of what you will. Um, but basically this um, VT500 can kind of take uh, a bit more additional gain, um, which is always, I think, quite good. Uh, they sound very similar, just going backwards and forwards. Um, and just for reference, stuck one below the other. So there will be a slight difference in maybe tonality and frequency. Um, but again, this is the same with many tests. It's quite hard sometimes to get uh, exactly accurate at the same time. But you'll get the gist. Um, and I'll put those other reference videos below. So. Uh, let's. We've gone back and forth, hopefully through the video, um, and now let's talk more about kind of form factor, I guess, and build quality. So in terms of uh, form factor, very similar to like the uh, Sankin. Um, if anything, the Sankin probably comes off slightly um, lower profile potentially, um, but I guess they've gone with just a solid, smoother edge overall, um, just to try and hide the form factor of it, I guess, poking through if you're trying to hide underneath. Um, but yeah, very similar. Cable length, slightly thinner. Again, I have DPAs as well, so it's probably closer to like a DPA cable. Uh, the Sankens were always kind of thicker, slightly thicker cables. Um, not that it's ever been that much of an issue. 
Um, they also come in white and beige for the actual um, cable. Not sure about the actual mounts. I'll have to check on that because uh, obviously with the RM11 uh, you can get the white and the beige mount to match your, obviously your white or beige mic. Now I should say as well that you can, um, there's a hole on the other side uh, but there's only one kind of face of the microphone. Um, so if you're sticking to the back of a shirt, which I'll show you in a second, uh, you can just flip over the mic uh, so actually the main part comes through here. Uh, so they've thought definitely a lot about the mounting uh, capabilities of this as well. So let's see how that sounds. Okay, and now this is mounted the other way around. It's just by this triangle here. Uh, now with a hairy chest, that it can be problematic to try and stick two clothes uh, when it's then going on to someone with a hairy chest. Thankfully, I'm staying very still for this, um, so it won't pick up that much. But this is just to give you a reference of if I flipped it round um, and tried to mount on the other side, what it would kind of sound like. Now, if I talk more towards it, uh, you can obviously definitely hear more clarity than if I'm further up, but I think you get a more balanced sound, obviously, if you're speaking straight out. This is common with all microphones, if you're not, with lavalier microphones, obviously, the changing in head position is uh, very important, um, often, especially choosing the side of uh, jackets, for instance, when people are doing interviews or on panels, uh, do they more tend to speak this way or this way? Um, so it's definitely something to consider. So now let's go on to my experiences of just using it day to day. So uh, I've just gone with a different placement, just so you get another different vibe of uh, how everything's sounding. Uh, it sounds really weird to talk and then listen to yourself because you get all the kind of bone conduction going into your ears. Uh, so it can sound a bit funny. Um, but yeah, and obviously on the phone uh, or whatever you're listening through, YouTube will process this in a set way as well. So it's always best to try and just rent out uh, mics uh, for a day or two. Um, because it doesn't cost realistically that much. If you if you get the ones with the right connector, then you don't have to rent out a full system. Um, so this will serve anyone well. I think the price point is very uh, reasonable for a, a type of microphone that it is in terms of just the high, higher end range. Um, and I think with the accessory pack, as well as the accessory pack being completely waterproof, I think it's a, it's a nice feature. They do an economy version as well. Um, but I would say if you're... Yeah, you may as well go pretty much most of the way. They do have uh, more in their range, such as this is the 500, but then they have the 506, which has more of a boost at 8, eight kilohertz, which is basically built more for being hidden essentially under more clothing uh, to basically compensate for all the boost that comes out of the chest uh, and the throat as well. Um, so yeah, that's potentially something to consider, but generally, uh, I think, for instance, the Sankens, I've always gone with kind of flatter line stuff and found that if I use, for instance, the DPA uh, 4071s, which have that kind of presence boost, um, they're good in definitely certain situations. Um, so it really depends where you need to be. Similar to like having lots of different shotguns um, or hypercardioids for different situations to give you kind of different sounds, uh, I think it should be a kind of similar approach, ideally, uh, with lavaliers, um, and so just having stuff in the in the in the bag that you can use uh, as kind of get out of jail free cards is um, is yeah is just very important day to day if you're doing stuff uh, professionally. Um, I say that just because you want to build in redundancy into your equipment because as soon as anything goes wrong, uh, generally the sound guys are not the people to uh, say that the kit house gave it to them wrong. So it's all your stuff, so you have to make sure that. You're covered in all sorts of ways. So overall, very impressed, I think, with the uh, with how it's kind of held up and using it over various different circumstances, uh, outdoors in the rain, et cetera, et cetera. It's held up just as any of my other microphones, uh, whether it be DPA or Sankens. And so it comes down to a lot of uh, just personal preference. Again, another thing to consider with um, when you get uh, lavaliers is trying to almost match potentially um kind of at least sonically um with your shotguns um it's why a lot of people can go for go for dpas just to go with then the dpa shotguns they try and uh to get similar kind of feels um from the sound that they're recording so then it, things can blend better um so a classic has always been the sankens and the sherps for instance um, so yeah, that's just another thing to consider 
trying to give a bit more context in terms of using it day-to-day uh, -day in the industry. But with the price point, with um, all the accessories uh, come very well built, kind of does remind me of like the kits that you used to get with the Tram uh, 50s. Uh, I, I haven't seen any, There's it's not been any more difficult uh, to kind of mount and clip on. It fits still perfectly with the um, Bubble Bee uh, stickers on the back that I have. Really like them, hypoallergenic. Um, so yeah, and it, it would just come down to uh, different use cases. So I prefer Sankens for clip-ons. And actually, I think these do better hidden in general, I think, just listening to myself now. Maybe when I listen back, I'll uh, think of something different. But hopefully that gives you a bit more scope. Um, again, I'll link down to more. Uh, there's been a couple of video reviews over the years, um, and they've just given more, I think, general context about people that just start out. But obviously, if you're following me on this channel and you've seen all 700 videos, um, yeah, I'm quite into this <laughs> kind of thing. So, um, yeah, it's good to be back. Any more questions, uh, get them down below. Um, and if I don't know, then I will uh, get the person or people that do know uh, to answer those questions as well. So, and v thanks for uh, Voice Technologies uh, for bearing with me getting this done. Um, I wanted to basically take a good hour or two just to solidly do it and with a baby coming in June and then COVID and Christmas and da 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 and working again and then having a business and having lots of travel time. Uh, it can be hard to like properly dedicate uh, a good solid hour to give a decent review because I don't want to just be uh, giving all the kind of generic, yeah, the cable is, the cable is thin and think about this when you're just starting out. So hopefully um, that gives you a bit more in depth and uh, look forward to seeing you hopefully in more videos. I seem to be doing them again. So let me know what else you wanna see as well. All right, catch you guys later.